digital representation of data, bits and bytes. So today we are going to talk about bits and bytes because essentially a bit is the smallest unit of data possible in a computer, but yet we also talk about bytes when we're talking about uh, calculations for storage and how much memory something takes up. So we want to clarify that relationship and then talk about bytes as the foundation of all our storage measurements. So as previously stated, computing systems only recognize two values, zero and one, which are used to represent an electrical signal being on or off. This is known as binary, okay, which is used to represent digital data, the thing we're studying right now as a part of information systems. Every individual zero or one is referred to as a bit of data, which takes up one bit of the system's memory. Now, every time an extra bit is added to a binary number, it increases the potential values possible exponentially. When we have eight of these bits next to each other, and in within one binary integer, it is equal to one byte of data because there's eight of them there, eight bits make a byte. And a byte itself is a foundation uh, for the calculation of a text value. They're usually made up in uh, with ASCII and Unicode, okay, of eight or seven bits of data, okay. But with extended ASCII, we've got now eight bit packets making up our data, okay. And the byte is the foundation of this. Bytes are then used as the basis for all other storage calculations. And that's really what I want to take a look at here today in this video. So here is my table, okay? And we're going to be looking at a variety of different uh, memory calculations, okay? And understanding what they are in reference to this byte value we've been discussing. So the smallest value, as I mentioned, is a bit. And we need to understand that eight bits equals one byte. Now you can see in the columns on the right-hand side, okay, I have approximate size in bytes and then actual size in bytes. Okay, and you're going to see, because I'm um, in a previous video as well, we've looked at how these binary values are calculated, okay? When we get to around the 1000 mark, okay, we actually end up with 1024, okay, and that gets hard for us to remember and calculate, so we, that's why we start giving approximate values, and this will make sense, a bit more sense as we go. So, we know that 8 bits equals 1 byte, so the next value we'll look at is a byte, a byte is abbreviated with a B, okay, and obviously 1 byte equals a byte, and both approximate and exact, that's easy to remember. It gets complicated now what I was talking about when we talk about a kilobyte. Okay, and a kilo, when we talk about a kilo, that means a thousand. So hence why it's a thousand bytes. But what it really is, is a thousand and twenty-four bytes. Because if we, as I said, if we looked at that table that we talked about in a previous video of how binary is calculated, it'd go 1, 2, 4, 16, 32, 64, 128. Okay, and that was our 8-bit packets. But if we continue those numbers going, the next number is 256, which is then followed by 512. And then we end up with 1024. Okay, and that's why that kind of factors into our memory calculation. Okay, but it's hard to sell 1024. It's hard to market that. It's hard to memorize that, especially when we don't just have one kilobyte, where we've got 25 kilobytes. Okay, it gets much harder to calculate that. So we often say the approximate of size, okay, in reference to how large something is, especially in these HSCs courses that we're talking about right now, because we're not allowed to use calculators in our subject either. So we are allowed to reference it as the approximate size value when doing calculations. Now, I'm not going to keep relating these values going on to how many bytes they are. I'm just going to refer them to their previous size value. So in looking at the next one, which is a megabyte, okay, it is a thousand kilobytes, okay, and a in actuality, it's 1,024 kilobytes. Same pattern once again. Next, we had the gigabyte era, okay, and that is 1,000 megabytes, okay, 1,024 to be um, uh, to be exact, okay. When I was um, just starting teaching, which not wasn't that long ago, okay, it was only about 12 years ago, a gigabyte was huge, okay, it was a mass massive, we could store so much on it, it was amazing when it came by. But now for this generation where we are right now, we're in the next region, which is the terabyte region. And we this was unheard of when I just started teaching, you know, if something was one terabyte, that was a massive system. Okay, and that's because it's 1,024 gigabytes, okay, so that's actually huge. And it's funny, right now, terabytes are the norm, does anyone here actually know what the next one is after a terabyte? Okay, think about it in your head for a sec before I actually tell you, but obviously in 10 years time, it will probably be the norm as well. Okay, and what is following a terabyte is what's known as a petabyte. Okay, and that's a PB. Okay, and you can obviously see the pattern there, KB, MB, GB, TB, and now PB. Okay, and that's 1,024 terabytes. And now when you think of that in your head, having a hard drive that was 1,024 terabytes, that probably sounds huge to you. That's how I felt 10 years ago about terabytes. So I hope this video has given you a bit of an introduction into 
bits and bytes. Essentially, we do use bytes as our standards for measurements, okay? And that a byte is made up of eight bits, which are the smallest units we use for calculation. And then every 1024 of these actual size calculations becomes the next calculation, okay? But it is uh, allowed to use the approximate calculation, which is just a thousand of whatever, to make it a thousand uh, gigabytes equals one terabyte, okay? But I hope this gives you an understanding of how these, uh, the memory of a computer works when factoring in its file sizes.